Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. So in this video, I'm going to discuss about chapter 1.2 collision theory. Okay, so I will try to finish the whole chapter 1.2 in this video. Right, so our learning outcome adalah you should be able to explain what is collision theory, define activation energy, explain transition state theory, and lastly, you should be able to draw energy profile diagram of a reaction. Okay, so let us start with the definition of collision theory. Okay, so collision theory is a theory that explain the rate of chemical reaction. It is based on the ideas that molecule must collide to react. And the second, the collision involved is an effective collision. Okay, so collision theory ada satu satu theory untuk explain uh, rate of chemical reaction. Okay, so rate of chemical reaction uh, ada dua benda lah yang mempengaruhi rate of chemical reaction, the first one is molecule must collide to react maksudnya, untuk reaction tu berlaku molecule tu mesti berlanggar antar dengan satu sama lain lah, ok and the collision involved is an effective collision, that's mean collision tu pelanggaran tu bukan pelanggaran yang biasa-biasa dia mesti pelanggaran yang effective collision, effective collision ni dia ada ciri-ciri dia pula lah, kalau kamu boleh relate dengan point yang seterusnya nanti ok, so tak apa, uh, rate is directly proportional to number of effective collision over time, that's mean the higher the number of effective collision, the rate of reaction makin tinggi lah, that's mean uh, masa untuk reaction tu berlaku lebih pendek ok, and inversely proportional to time, so maksudnya if the time taken for the reaction to occur is less, that's mean the rate of reaction also high Alright, so tadi kita ada mention about effective collision and saya cakap dia ada berkaitan dengan dua benda faktor ni. Okay, so dia kata only effective collision can cause formation of product. Macam saya cakap tadi, pelanggaran mesti berlaku dan pelanggaran tu mesti pelanggaran yang effective baru boleh terhasilnya product. Okay, tapi apa requirement untuk effective collision? Okay, so this is the requirement for effective collision. The first one adalah colliding molecule must possess a certain minimum kinetic energy. Okay, so kiranya molecule yang berlanggar tu mesti ada minimum kinetic energy. And that minimum kinetic energy is also known as activation energy. Okay, kiranya dia kena ada activation energy lah baru dia reaction tu boleh berlaku to initiate a chemical reaction alright and then uh, molecule must collide in correct orientation kiranya cara pelanggaran dia tu mesti pelanggaran yang tepat lah kena pada tempatnya ok if not the reaction tu tak akan berlaku lah alright so ingat lah requirement for effective collision ada dua colliding molecule must possess a certain minimum kinetic energy or activation energy to initiate the chemical reaction and the second one molecule must collide in correct orientation. Okay, so this question is quite famous lah. Okay, so next, what is activation energy? Okay, so um, activation energy is the minimum energy required to initiate a chemical reaction. Okay, so the word minimum here is very important lah. Okay, so energy yang diperlukan untuk memulakan sesuatu chemical reaction. Okay, ataupun minimum energy required to convert reactant to product. Okay. Minimum energy yang diperlukan untuk tukar reactant jadi product. So, if the question ask you to give the definition of activation energy, you can choose one of the definition here lah. But, please bear in mind the word minimum energy adalah sangat penting. If let's say kamu letak the energy required to initiate the chemical reaction, your answer akan salah. Okay. Alright. So, the next one adalah Uh, this gambar raja here adalah untuk explain what is activation energy. Tengok yang ni lah lebih senang. Okay, so this one is what we call energy profile diagram. Okay, so dekat energy profile diagram ada energy on the y axis and reaction coordinate atau reaction progress on the x axis. Okay, so any reactant and then nak hasilkan product. So, as you can see, for reactant to produce product, this reactant must possess at least energy equal to activation energy. Kiranya dia kena ada energy at least sama dengan activation energy baru boleh hasilkan product. Okay, so hopefully kamu clear lah activation energy tu apa. Alright, so next, 
<coughs> I'm going to explain to you the transition state theory. Okay, so in order to show what is transition state theory, I need to use this energy profile diagram. Okay, so there are two types of energy profile diagram, exothermic and endothermic. Okay, so I will start with exothermic process. Okay, so exothermic, okay, ini chapter seterusnya kamu akan belajar. Okay, exothermic process adalah bila delta H dia negatif. Okay, so what is delta H? Delta H is enthalpy. Okay, so enthalpy change negative. That's mean the reaction is exothermic process. Okay, so uh, kalau untuk yang dah pernah belajar ataupun pernah tengok lah kot. Delta H equal to summation of enthalpy product minus summation of enthalpy reactant. Okay, so kenapa delta H ni boleh dapat negatif? Sebab enthalpy product dia lebih rendah daripada enthalpy reactant. Okay, so enthalpy product rendah dari enthalpy reactant. That's why your delta H is negative. Okay, <coughs> so when you want to draw the exothermic process punya energy profile diagram, kamu mesti ni lah uh, your energy untuk reactant ni kena lebih tinggi. Okay, while your energy untuk product lebih rendah. Okay, alright. So that's why the graph look like this. Okay, and then for <coughs> reactant to produce product, macam saya cakap tadi, this reactant must possess at least energy equal to activation energy. Okay, sebab dia kena overcome this uh, apa ni barrier ke? Okay, and then baru dia boleh hasilkan product. Okay. So, activation energy ada dua jenis. Ada EA forward, ada EA reverse. Okay, so EA forward maksudnya from reactant pergi atas bukit ni. That is EA forward. Okay, EA reverse adalah produk pergi ke atas bukit ni. Okay, so maksudnya kalau kamu tengok equation dekat sini, equation dia reversible. That means reactant boleh hasilkan produk, produk boleh hasilkan reactant. But as you can see, in order for product to produce reactant balik, it needs a lot of energy sebab activation energy dia very high ok so ini adalah EA reverse ok and then enthalpy tadi macam mana cara kira enthalpy ok so our enthalpy is energy rate product tadi ok over here the energy product ok minus with energy reactant ok then you should get your enthalpy ok so obviously our enthalpy here should be negative that's why this energy profile diagram is for exothermic process Okay, and then this one, uh, transition state. Okay, transition state adalah satu state in between reactant and product. Okay, and compound di dalam transition state kita panggil activated complex. Okay, alright. So, you need to know benda-benda ni. Okay, so that nanti bila kamu buat uh, drawing kamu, kamu kena label lah. Okay, alright. So, next one. Let us look at endothermic pula. Okay, so endothermic terbalik lah. So, our delta H now is positive. Okay, so enthalpy positif maksudnya kalau kita punya pengiraan ni. Okay, summation enthalpy product minus summation enthalpy reactant. Okay, so enthalpy product kita should be greater lah besar than enthalpy Return. So that's why our delta H is positive. Okay. So uh, enthalpy product lebih besar. So that's why as you can see product punya energy tinggi compared to return. Okay. And then uh, this is the graph. Okay. So sekarang. Okay. EA forward kita adalah daripada return pergi ke atas bukit ni. Okay. So EA forward kita tinggilah. Okay. And then EA reverse kita produk pergi ke uh, atas ni. Okay, atas bukit ni. So, that is EA reverse. Okay, our enthalpy change is from reactant pergi produk. Sama macam tadi. This is our enthalpy change. Okay, and atas ni. Okay, this is what we call transition state. And then dekat transition state ada activated complex. Alright. So, mm, alright. So, next one. Kita baca dekat bawah apa yang saya tulis. So, EA, activation energy as an energy barrier that must be overcome by the reactant before they can form product. Yes, that's right. Okay, so in order for reactant to produce product, 
<coughs> reactant tu must overcome this barrier first ok so when EA is large the rate of reaction is lower that's mean kalau EA tu terlalu tinggi kuranglah reaction tu ok ialah not all molecule ada energy yang banyak kan ok so when EA is small reaction is higher macam <coughs> macam ni EA is very small so banyak reaction yang boleh tukar jadi product but for product to form back reaction tak banyak lah sebab as you can see the EA is big banyak besar ok so maksudnya produk ni kena ada energy yang sangat besar untuk jadi balik reaction ok so less favorable lah alright so next one let us go to transition state ok so tadi saya dah cakap dah what is transition state transition state is the configuration of atoms of the colliding species at the time of the collision with the highest potential energy before forming product ok so transition state adalah uh, keadaan atom ok pada masa dia ada potential energy yang paling tinggi ni lah ok and intermediate state that lies between reactant and product ok so tadi saya dah cakap react, di tengah-tengah antara reactant dan product itu kita panggil transition state and the species form at transition state is called activated complex ok Alright, and then next we need to look at what is activated complex. So, activated complex is very unsta unstable and has a short half-life. Okay, so activated complex ni sebab apa dia unstable? Because nak kata dia transition, dia dalam proses nak tukar jadi dari reactant pergi produk. So, dia unstable. Okay, that's mean it tends to form back reactant or dia akan produce produk lah. Okay. And then its potential energy is greater than reactant or product Yelah kalau kamu tengok dekat sini So atas ni adalah activated complex Okay so the energy is higher than reactant Higher than product Okay and then it decompose to form product or reactant Yes okay So if the energy cukup then it will form product Kalau energy tak cukup then it will turn back to reactant Okay, and then in an activated complex, the bond in the reactant molecule are in the process of breaking while the new bond in the product molecule start forming. Okay, so dalam activated complex, dia dalam keadaan half-half, separuh-separuh ke? Okay, macam dekat sini lah kamu boleh tengok. Initially, C bonded to I. Okay, so tapi kalau ikut this mechanism here, nanti kamu belajar chapter 5 onwards. Okay, so this OH nak form bond dengan carbon While this CI bond is going to break Okay, so dekat sini, ini activated complex tu Okay, so activated complex as you can see C dot 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 I That's mean this bond between C dengan I Tengah nak proses dalam proses breaking lah Okay So, breaking bond Okay, while C dan OH pula dalam proses nak form Forming bond Okay, so benda ni kita panggil activated complex Alright, and this symbol here to show that This activated complex is in the transition state Okay, so next jom kita cuba example 1 Okay, so in example 1 dia kata draw a potential energy diagram For an exothermic reaction Okay, so indicate on the drawing the potential energy of reactant and product, activation energy forward and reverse, heat of reaction. Okay, so kita kena label semua benda ni lah yang dia nak. Okay, tapi before that, we need to be able to figure out lah macam mana potential energy diagram for exothermic reaction. Okay, so first let us start with what I add this, potential energy kita. And then our X axis Okay so label Okay so kalau exothermic Okay exothermic tadi kita kata delta H negative Okay so bila delta H negative Maksudnya kita punya enthalpy product kita lebih rendah daripada enthalpy reactant Okay so that's mean reactant kita tinggi lah So kita draw reactant kita tinggi And then product kita rendah Okay, so boleh draw macam tu lah Alright, so this is our exothermic And then label lah So this is reactant Okay, and this is product Potential energy for 
product is here Okay, while the potential energy for reactant is here Okay, okay so kita settle yang the first one There's one, dia kata activation energy forward and reverse Okay, so macam saya cakap tadi Activation energy start from reactant Okay, so ini EA forward Reactant pergi ke atas bukit ni Okay, and then kalau kita nak label EA reverse pula EA reverse daripada produk Okay, pergi ke atas bukit tu lah So, EA reverse Alright Okay, so that is EA reverse So, done Next one, heat of reaction What is heat of reaction? Heat of reaction maksudnya dia tanya delta H lah Okay, so delta H is from reactant to product Okay, so dari sini Pergi ke produk kita Okay, so itu adalah Delta H Okay So done This is our Potential energy diagram For exothermic reaction Dan kita dah label Semua benda yang dia nak lah Okay and then next one Adalah uh, For the reaction A plus B Produce C plus D The enthalpy change Of the forward Adalah 21 kilojoule per mole Okay so enthalpy change Okay saya cakap tadi Uh, enthalpy change adalah delta H Ok so dia kata delta H nilai dia 21 kJ per mol Dan the important bit is The value of delta H is positive That's mean the reaction is endothermic reaction Ok so the activation energy forward adalah nilai ini Ok and then dia kata sketch the reaction profile for this reaction Ok maksudnya energy profile diagram tu lah Ok So, jom kita draw. Okay, so kalau endothermic, maksudnya dia terbalik lah dari exothermic. Produk dia yang tinggi, return dia yang rendah. Okay, so, yep. Okay, so maybe our en energy profile diagram looks like this lah. Okay, so this is return. This is product. Okay and then kita label lah semua benda yang dia bagi data tu Okay so this question is slightly different from the above question Because dia bagi data So bila kita label we need to include the data Okay So dia bagi kita <coughs> Activation energy forward is 84 kJ per mol Okay so kita pun label lah So this one Okay so EA forward kita 84 kJ per mol Next we need to label the delta H Okay, so delta H is from return to product. Okay, so delta H kita equal to positive 21 kJ per mole. Okay, and then next, uh, what is the activation energy of the reverse reaction? Okay, so dia minta activation energy untuk reverse. Okay, so this one, dia macam, kalau kamu faham macam mana nak identify EA reverse and EA forward, then you can figure out the answer. Okay, so cum, cuba, kita, kita cuba buat lah. So, kalau EA reverse, that's mean from product pergi ke atas bukit ni. So, this is EA reverse. Okay. So, soalan suruh cari EA reverse. Kamu ada EA forward, kamu ada delta H. Then, apa perlu kamu buat? Then, kita tolak lah. Okay. So, EA forward equal to EA reverse plus Delta H Ok So kalau ikut kita punya pengiraan EA forward tam, Equal to EA reverse Tambah dengan delta H But we want to find EA reverse So EA reverse Equal to EA forward Ok Positive 84 Kilojoule per mole Minus with 21 kilojoule Per mole Ok So 84 minus 21 Equal to 63 kilojoule per mole. Okay, so that is our EA reverse.